a lot of people think that balance in video games is very, very complicated, but actually, this is not the case. And I'm talking about MMOs specifically here. Uh, so I mean, we're going to be talking about a lot of MMO specific concepts. But in general, I think you could actually apply this to any game. So here's the deal. We start from our baseline reference of a, so a an amount of damage per second, right? Let's just say that every profession and every build, every class in the game, like it starts out here. And we'll just call this, it's just, it doesn't matter. We'll just say 40,000, right? This is 40K DPS for whatever reason, right? It doesn't actually matter. It could be Archer, it could be X DPS. Now, this is the key concept that people seem to not really understand. And it's one of the reasons why Guild Wars 2 Balance in particular feels really out of whack. Again, it could definitely apply to other games as well. The problem is, is that everything that your build does outside of doing damage needs to come at a cost, right? So here's a really spicy one. If your build is ranged, it should lose damage, right? If you're, you know, if you're ranged, right? Like if you have range, you lose damage, right? If you have area of effect damage, you should also lose damage from that, right? That's actually a really powerful piece of utility. So if you have AOE, you should lose damage, right? Because again, right, air of effect is a thing that should have some type of opportunity cost to it. If you have healing, if you have support, right, if you're tanky, right, all of these things should reduce damage, actually, in every single way. And funnily enough, here's another really fun one. If you have power damage, power damage is better than condition damage, especially in Guild Wars 2, where bosses have very low hit points. So having damage over time should actually have higher damage per second compared to direct damage bills. Now, funnily enough, power damage and condition damage have actually blended together a bit in Guild Wars 2. Like, Condies are typically very burnt. So I wouldn't actually say this is that true anymore. If condition damage builds were a lot slower, then that will be way more true than it actually is. But yeah, this is the key thing that needs to be hit on with Guild Wars 2, right? Is that everything that you do needs to have some kind of opportunity cost to it, right? Because the more things that your build can do, the more adaptable it will be to a situation and the more like options you have to apply that to a raid, right? The more options, look, here you go. In general, more options is less damage, okay? I feel like a teacher right now because I've done this very boring graphic and it's making me a little sad, but don't worry. Jurnut's gonna fix it in post. He's gonna put like some sequins on it, right? Maybe like a bright glowing star, right? Loads of cool stuff over there. So that's basically the core concept. I don't really wanna do say a lot more than that because that is it. I feel like I've got my point across pretty effectively, right? If you can do stuff, if you can revive people, if you can apply boons, if you can heal while doing damage, if you can do anything, right? If you're durable, if you have cleave, if you're ranged, right? All of these things should come at a DPS cost because they are a utility increase, right? So if we were to actually um, kind of do another one of these, right? If we go ahead and duplicate this, right? Like the, you, you'd want a, you'd kind of want a graph of DPS versus utility, right? So if we have DPS, DPS on the way up like this, right? And utility, right? On this graph here, right? The, again, this is kind of like an arbitrary thing. I actually think it should be to an extent a little bit um, exponential. That is to say that the more utility you have, like the harsher you should probably get punished for this, but we'll say that it's fairly linear for now, actually. It should probably be a little bit like this right like and you, as you get more extreme the damage kind of like really drops off here quite a lot like and it gets steeper right like the more utility you pack on the steeper the curve gets so if you have like a little bit of utility right like you know you don't actually get hit that hard right like it's like okay right you've got a little bit you can do something but if you have like a lot of utility then you get punished really hard on the dps um the dps axis here because again if you don't, then things get insanely imbalanced insanely quickly, right? Um, I think the really good example is this is just Scourge and Firebrand and Renegade in Guild Wars 2. They're both insanely tanky builds. They're also ranged a lot of the time there as well. Firebrand a bit more towards melee, but Renegade has loads of range, uh, particularly the Condi build. Scourge has loads of range. They have an insane amount of utility. They can do everything all in one package, and they still do top tier DPS. So the problem is, is that Renegade... So here, here's the issue, right? Like, you have Renegade 
over here, right? Then you have Scourge kind of also over here. And you have Firebrand over here. And things over here are not going to be able to compete with poor old Weaver, which is basically here, right? So, like, Weaver has, like, the same damage, but, oh, wait, it has way less utility. So it's just not going to be very attractive, right? But there you go. That's, that's part two. That's part two. You wanted part two about the balance saga? That's it. But this time we're keeping it concise. We're keeping it short. We're keeping it speedy, right? Pay a DPS tax when you have utility. That is it. And all the things that I mentioned need to have an opportunity cost. If they don't, your game won't be balanced. Your game's going to suck. And everyone's going to only play one specific thing. That's the reality of the situation. Boom. There we go. Done. Hopefully that's a bit more succinct. Were you the first thing you'd change then? Uh, less damage? Probably less damage. Um, I, th uh, I, would, I would just nerf all the builds that have loads of utility. Like, I'll just nuke their damage really hard. Right, why do you think Anet doesn't understand um, that which you just told us? Ah, now th now that's part three. Now, part honestly, this is an uh, honestly maybe I'll may I, I can maybe talk about this a little bit later because now you deal with the arena net conundrum. The problem is is that the player base doesn't appreciate. Oh man, I almost have to go back to that. The issue is is that the player base doesn't value the builds that have high utility but low dps that's the issue um although honestly that one that's probably for a scripted video actually uh that's more something that i'd want to actually sit down and, and have like very very scripted in my opinion because it's a very difficult concept to explain and it really is like the true horror that arena has to deal with um the issue is is that the player base themselves will actively spread misinformation about certain builds and they actively won't play certain builds if they're considered to be bad and typically the builds that are high utility low dps don't see play by the community because the community does not value them very much the best example of this would actually be scourge scourge when it did 29,000 dps was probably overpowered not underpowered um but the community refused to play it because it didn't have a very high DPS benchmark to it. Bear in mind, Scourge was even like more supportive than it is now um, back then as well. So it was actually even stronger than it used to be. But basically, that is like the arena net hell. The arena net hell is, is that if they balance their game and they actually design it well, players will actively spread misinformation and say that the game isn't well balanced. Right, um, even though it actually is. That is where you really start to get into the into the weeds for Arena. It gets very, very difficult for them to actually understand this and figure out how to do that. Because if they do it right, the community will tell them until they're blue in the face they're doing it wrong. I think Ana maybe just has to uh, maybe Ana should just take a stronger stance and say, like, no, it's actually good. Um, you guys are just bad. Uh, I think I'd like to see that. Kind of the Chris Cleary response. Right, uh, maybe not that, not that, you know, not, you know, not that nuclear, but close to it, you know.